Now, Ukraine's foreign ministry has just released a statement calling for steps to reach a ceasefire and to implement the Minsk agreements starting from Monday. To discuss this, I'm now joined by Daniel McAdams, executive director at the Ron Paul Institute. Thank you very much for being with us here Thanks. on RT International. Uh, now, can we take these diplomatic statements seriously when the military's actions seem to contradict everything uh, that is coming out of the Ukrainian government? Well, I think this is a frozen conflict that simply that probably can't go on very much longer the way it is. Uh, we saw just this last week, uh, President Poroshenko talked about uh, achieving a military victory in the east. He said, we will retake Donbass region. And, you know, they probably, he's probably calculating that he has U.S. government support in this move. If you remember back at the end of last year, the Ukraine Freedom Support Act, which was passed by Congress and signed by the president, uh, Section 3 of that act states that it is U.S. policy to assist the government of Ukraine in restoring its sovereignty and, and uh, territorial integrity. So they may be calculating that they do have U.S. backing. And remember, there's $350 million dollars in that bill that can be used to provide weapons to Ukraine. So they may be hoping that a that some sort of a provocation or some sort of an escalation may trigger uh, the release of that money to Ukraine. It's speculation, but reading from, from past history, I think that can be certainly something worth considering. Well, if you look at what the army is doing right now, it seems they, they are stepping up its offensive. This is the Ukrainian army. Uh, government forces say, or anti-government forces say that they've come under fire at least 50 times on Sunday alone. Do you think that the army can regain any territory in the Donbass region? Well, I think they've claimed that they've retaken the airport or part of the airport. I don't know if, uh, how, how true that is or how much truth there is to it. You know, I think they've, they've, the, the army from Kiev has been very careful in portraying this as a response to the militias taking the airport, which had been held by Kiev. And I think certainly that's how the U.S. and its allies are portraying it. They've not crossed any lines. They've not violated Minsk. Uh, so therefore, they're in the right. However, this is an es escalation. <clears throat> And I think any one of us who is watching this understands that there is there has been no real ceasefire. There have been over a thousand people, the majority of them being civilians uh, in that uh, in the in independent seeking region that have been killed since the ceasefire was announced just a couple of months ago. So for these people, there is no ceasefire. <clears throat> these skirmishes. Uh, as you say, are escalating. I think it's leading to something much bigger. Now, about that, something much bigger. You touched on it a little bit before. What about the timing of all of this? Why now? Well, I think the uh, Ukrainian army has had ch a chance to regroup. I think they feel much more confident that they have solid Western support. <clears throat> Pardon me. I think you have a new Congress in Washington uh, that's dominated by very, very uh, neoconservative, very aggressive Republicans who have been very, very strongly one-sided in their view of this conflict. And they also feel that they have some, um, uh, some authority to, uh, to continue U.S. intervention in the region rather than to back off and let uh, Ukraine uh, uh, solve its own problems. So I think uh, there is a real renewed interest in the U.S. in solving this problem to what the neocons perceive as U.S. advantage. All right. Interesting to hear your thoughts. Daniel McAdams, director at the executive director at the Ron Paul Institute. Thank you very much for being with us here on RT International.